All right, guys, so we've been out here for a while, um, harping, looking for, you know, all kinds of things, and we haven't had too much luck, but uh, these tarps can be pretty good sometimes for reptiles and amphibians. They tend to hold a lot of moisture depending on where you put them. This one was put out pretty recently, so it's not. I'm not expecting too much. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna keep going for a little bit longer and hopefully we can turn, turn something up. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. This is insane. This has to be undoubtedly a county record, if not a state record. This is, this is incredible. I can't believe it, this is in situ. Look at the beautiful coloration on this beauty. I, I have to get my camera, oh my gosh. No, no! Hey everyone and welcome to Nature with Gabe, the channel that connects you to nature and incredible people just like yourself. Today I'm out with my friend Noah Fields and we're looking for snakes. If you're not familiar with who Noah is, he's an awesome herper and he is super dedicated. He has an amazing YouTube channel called NKF Herping. If you haven't checked that out, you should definitely check it out after this video. I'll link it down in the description below. Anyway, today Noah and I are going to be looking for herps. We're going to be herping and we're going to tell you what exactly herping is. I hope you enjoy the video. In order to understand what herping is, you're going to want to know that herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. Herping in its simplest terms is going out and searching for reptiles and amphibians in the wild. Herpers are people who go and look for reptiles and amphibians in the wild, and herps are the absolutely incredible reptiles and amphibians that we get to share this planet with. Nice. First perimeter snake of the day. So whenever you're out herping and you're flipping rocks in a habitat like this, it's really important that you put the rock back and let the snake go back where it was found. 99% um, of the time, you're gonna have to do that. It's the best case scenario. Um, so I'm just gonna demonstrate how to put this rock back. You're just gonna lift it down, but make sure that the, the dirt seal around the rock is correct. You can see right here, this part you can see the dirt beneath the rock, which means it hasn't been put back completely correct. So just scoot it back like that. And then you're good to let the snake or whatever you found under the rock crawl back under. Herping takes you to some really cool places. Uh, obviously, we're in a rather urban area right here, but this is a really beautiful creek that a lot of people probably wouldn't know was here if they weren't out looking for snakes. Um, I've been all over the country looking for snakes. I've been to some really incredible places out west and uh, some, some equally impressive places here on the east coast too. So you just never know what kind of awesome place you're gonna end up when you're looking for snakes. methods and strategies that herpers use to find snakes. I actually have a series that I'm working on called How to Find Snakes. You can check out some of those videos on my channel, but um, there's a ton of different ways and one of the most common ways that herpers will try and find reptiles and amphibians is by looking underneath things because a lot of reptiles and amphibians use cover like logs and rocks and pieces of garbage like old, you know, rugs and stuff that's been thrown out in the woods. Um, uh, herpers will put out pieces of tin and different things like that to encourage um, reptiles and amphibians to go underneath them and it's a good place to check and look for those types of creatures. Um, so you'll see a lot of herpers uh, looking underneath things and it's a fantastic method and it's definitely something that you can try and go out and do carefully as long as you're putting the rock back or putting whatever you're flipping back exactly how you found it. <laughs>
you to the weirdest places, dude. I'm actually stuck in this hole. This is sick. All right, here we go. Ugh. No snakes in there, by the way. See what you got. Well, got two more toads here, both under that rock, with two gravid female skinks that were probably getting ready to lay their eggs. So we're gonna make sure to put these girls back so they can get back to it. But that was a good flip. I, uh, I first got into herping when I was as young as I can remember. Um, just turning over rocks in the yard, finding snakes. And uh, my parents always encouraged me. My dad did the same thing when he was a kid. And he would always bring home snakes for me to see that he found. And uh, if I had to give y'all any advice for beginning herpers, I'd just say stick with it. Do a lot of research. And uh, always be careful about who you share your spots with. And, I have been a nature lover for as far as I can remember, and reptiles and amphibians in particular have been an extreme fascination of mine. There's just something so mysterious about their often cryptic um, and, and misunderstood nature, and it's something that drives me to continue to search for them and learn more about them as much as I can. Another exciting thing about herping is you never really know what you're going to find. Um, it can be really challenging sometimes. Like today, for instance, we've seen like five or six snakes and we've been at it all morning. Um, it's not uncommon to go out and not see anything at all when you compare it to something like birding where it's kind of hard to go outside and not see a bird. It's, uh, it's not particularly difficult to go out looking for snakes and not see anything at all. It's a pretty regular occurrence, to be honest. Now you can't really say that you know what herping is if you don't know a little bit about the herping community. Herpers are wild, eccentric, interesting people and um, there's really no way I can do it justice, uh, you know, describing the herping community, but I would highly recommend that you check out a um, video that inspired this video, a video called What is Herping by Smet Logic, one of the OG herpers on YouTube. Uh, I'll link his channel in that video down in the description below and you should definitely check that video out. Uh, inspired me to make this video and it really gives you a nice perspective on the herping community, uh, so definitely check that out. One thing I love about herping is that it gives you a very unique perspective on the natural world. By searching for reptiles and amphibians, these really unique and super misunderstood uh, animals, you get to learn about a lot of things in, in nature that you might not encounter and you might not think about. Guys, just flip this little narrow mouth under a rock. These guys are pretty common, but they're very unique. Uh, they're really the only thing that's anything like them around here. There's two species in the U.S., the Eastern and Great Plains. Actually, I think there was recently a third split off. But uh, anyways, they're pretty common. You see them in these sandy areas near water a lot. Um, got a weird little 
box turtle like head, but it's a frog, so they look very uh, unique among frogs. Kind of hard to mistake them with anything else, and that's why they're named the Narrowmouth Toad. They're actually a frog, of course, but because um, they have that little bitty tiny mouth at the end of this little round body, they're shaped kind of like an arrowhead. Herping tends to be really hands-on. You're spending a lot of time looking underneath things and you know hiking through all kinds of various habitat and so I just want to remind everyone that it's really important to uh, be mindful and respectful of those natural spaces. Make sure you're returning cover items back so that uh, not only the reptiles and amphibians but other animals can continue to use those spaces as they, as they desire. So herping is not only a great way to get out exercise and get outside, but you run into all kinds of cool stuff that you might not see otherwise. I just accidentally disturbed a turkey nest. It's a wild turkey, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I didn't see the, the mother on the eggs, but I'm gonna walk away quickly so she can get back to the eggs. Uh, but pretty cool find. We just found this little opening along this pond and there are a ton of turtles right here basking. We just heard them all jump in the water. I don't know if you can see any of them. Um, probably mostly sliders, uh, but really cool to see. Now if you do decide to pick up any of the reptiles and amphibians that you find, make sure that you know exactly what that animal is. Uh, these animals would much rather be left alone and you know it's completely fine to just find them and leave them as they are, as they would like to be. But if you do want to pick them up and get a photo, just make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and you have 100% identification on that animal uh, and that you're comfortable handling them so they don't get hurt and you don't get hurt. We're over like a 50 foot precipice right now. If I fall, death is certain. And man, I'm just feeling like I might lose my grip at any second. So it's getting close to the end of the day and Noah and I found this big pile of just trash here uh, in the city and we looked underneath it and we found two snakes, both relatively common snakes, a decays brown snake and a, a ring neck snake. But the decays brown snake is the prettiest decays brown snake I've ever seen. Uh, we're taking photos of it right now. I'll share some footage with you guys. I think it's really important that I also mention that reptiles and amphibians are susceptible to diseases just like humans are. And so when you're out herping, you want to make sure that you disinfect and clean off the hiking gear, um, your hands, and you know any, any of your equipment that you've had out in the field when you go from uh, one place to another. Uh, so that you can minimize the amount of, of disease that you could potentially be spreading. 
Noah just headed home and I decided to hit one last spot and just walk around before I drove home as well. And I got really lucky underneath one of these big orange things, I just found a copperhead. Check it out. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a couple things about what herping is. Um, and you know, I wanna thank Noah for being in the video. Definitely go check his channel out and check out the video I mentioned earlier uh, by Smet Logic. That's another really great one. Uh, if you subscribe to Noah's channel, it's a great way to learn a ton more about herping. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed a little bit following us along today. And I'd encourage you to go outside and try and uh, find some reptiles and amphibians yourself you know look for snakes turtles frogs lizards you know they're really misunderstood and underappreciated and going out and looking for them can be a really great way to get a unique perspective on the natural world I hope you guys have a great day remember nature is powerful and so are you